Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather coming at you with another video. In today's update, we're gonna be talking about a stratospheric warming event with a weakening polar vortex. So before I do get started, if you do like weather-related content, please subscribe to my channel and definitely share with your friends on social media. All right, so let's delve into the details. Let's start off with basically how the polar vortex works. Whenever you have a strong polar vortex, it's basically shaped like a donut, meaning all the Arctic cold air is essentially confined to the polar regions. Now, when it's in its weakening phase or it, it becomes wavy or starts to buckle, that's when the jet stream starts to dip a little further south and allowing for that colder air to penetrate into uh, Canada, into the, into the United States. Now, during a what they call a stratospheric warming event, you essentially basically have a sudden spike in the Arctic in the stratosphere. So here's a little chart here basically depicting where, because a lot of people were visual, uh, where, you know, basically where jets fly, but way above where, where commercial jets fly is the stratosphere. And during a, during a stratospheric warming event, you essentially have a, basically a 70 degree spike, spiking those warmer temperatures into the Arctic, allowing for that colder air to dive southward because it's got to go somewhere, right? <laughs> so that's basically what's actually going to happen over the next uh, couple of weeks. So let's kind of walk you through it. Here's, here's an overall look of the stratosphere right now. And this is March the 11th. Okay. And you can see all this Arctic air in the, in the deep purples are really confined to the Arctic circle here. Here's the United States, right? Here's Canada way up here. Right. And so it's, it's really cold up here in the stratosphere. So it's all pretty much confined and not allowing more or less shaped like a donut, not allowing this, any of this colder air, uh, to penetrate South. But once we let's walk you through t a timeline by it, uh, by Friday, it's actually starting to what they call weakening. When you have a, a weakening or what they call it reflecting event, it allows it, it becomes wavy or buckling. And so it allows that some of that, some of those colder temperatures aloft to kind of start diving south. All right. And you can kind of see this, what's happening by Friday um, of this week. And let's take you out to another frame. And by Sunday, the 15th, it really starts to kind of get going. Now, again, this is up in the stratosphere. You can see the warming temperatures start to really uh, escalate by the 15th. But also, as this spikes, it's going to draw some of that colder air down and eventually penetrate to the surface. Now, again, this is 20, 30 miles up what you're looking at. So it, over time, this will penetrate down to the surface where, where, where we live, right? And so this is going to be coming in from into the northwest of, of the U.S. And this is by the 15th. So let's take you out to another frame. By the 18th, it really starts to kind of get going. And the, and the warm air surges even uh, higher now, deepening the, that, those colder temperatures aloft and even starting to really accelerate and penetrate into the, into the northwest. Now, overall, the, the, uh, you can take a look at some of the temperature anomalies from the 20th 20, 20, 24th, and it kind of depicts of where that colder air is going to come in. And essentially, it's going to be on the western side from the northwest um, well, with well below normal temperatures. Now, if we take a look at what, how the, basically the Arctic Oscillation and the, neg and the, and the North Atlantic Oscillation looks, it's been pr primarily positive for much of the winter. In fact, the Arctic Oscillation has only been negative eight times uh, for the winter. And so that's why we had a lot of a, a, a mild winter because a lot of this, this polar air was trapped up, at, up, up north and allowed Alaska to be cold and allowed Canada and, and further north to be cold. Uh, but since it really wasn't diving southward, it, it was fairly mild over the, over the U.S. And so now we're actually seeing some of that weakening and the polar vortex allowing some of those uh, colder temperatures uh, to dive south. And the alignment of the polar vortex coming down is going to be off the northwest. 
And it's evident in the AO where it actually starts to dive southward by the middle of the month and continue this downward trajectory. Uh, some of the models are actually implying it, it may go negative by the end of the month, as well as the North Atlantic oscillation is uh, going negative as well. So now let's take you look, take a look at the actual anomaly temperatures at the actual surface, you know, where we live. And this is by the 14th on Saturday, you can see that cold uh, Arctic air, and this is a good 20 to 40 degrees below normal up in Canada. Uh, going to be uh, trying to penetrate in into uh, the northern branch of the of the U.S. and off off the northwest. By the 17th, it actually it does that, and some of these colder temperatures, parts of like Montana, um, are going to be struggling uh, to get out of the single digits uh, for highs, uh, even as uh, well below normal temperatures are going to be penetrating in into the northwest and trying to dive south. And, and I stopped it here because this is where basically that severe weather setup that we kind of been talking about of just the, the extreme anomalies where you'd have, you know, 20 to 25 degrees above normal and 20 to 25 degrees below normal. And that's gonna set the stage for a severe weather outbreak uh, because of the just the clash of temperatures that's gonna be coming in for next week and it even intensifies by the 20th as more uh, colder air tries to penetrate into the mid latitudes uh, down south as as we got a warm surge off the southeast ridge we've got that warm air coming in from the south with the south southwest wind and that colder air aloft and you can actually see alaska now where you've you've been you know well below normal for much of the winter is now well above above normal with that weakening polar vortex and displacement. So let's take you out to another frame. By the 23rd, uh, it's it's showing signs that it's trying to penetrate a little bit a little bit further south, but again, looking at the NAO and the AO, it it tries to go it tries to go negative. And of course, this is uh, two weeks two weeks out, so it's hard to tell exactly how far south this is able going to get and then especially to the east because a lot of this alignment is from off off the northwest so and by by the 26 um it will we'll have to see because we have more colder air and if it, if the nao and the ao actually does go negative we might maybe get another surge uh, to try to uh, penetrate south or it may just lift back up uh, back up into uh, to the Arctic. So we'll just have to uh, pay attention to that. But overall, the, uh, the NOAA outlook is on board depicting well below uh, normal temperatures coming up on their six to 10 day outlook, as well as the 18, eight to 14 day outlook, where you've got a strong demarcation line in the middle of the country, where you're gonna have 20 to 40 degrees, 20 to 20, 20 to 30 degrees below normal with a bullseye in Montana and well above normal temperatures where I'm thinking a, a big severe weather outbreak is going to occur and even extending out to the following week next week is an even a bigger player as this moves a little bit further south uh, and increasing some of the some of the storm chances as well with those clash in temperatures so um, I appreciate you guys watching this video and definitely if you found value uh, please like this video and definitely uh, subscribe to my channel and share with your friends on social media. And I'll be going live as well uh, next week, or if not this weekend, when this severe weather starts to ramp up, I'll be going live. So be sure to subscribe and uh, ring the bell to get notified uh, as I track storms real time. So I appreciate you guys watching and definitely catch me in the next video where I protect you before and after the storm.